Jesus endured the cross without much support from his disciples. In fact, Mark 14 and verse 50 records, And they all forsook him and fled. When Paul was on trial before Caesar, he wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 16, No man stood with me, but all men forsook me. This reminds us that mature, love-motivated Christians will remain faithful to their trust without human encouragement. They will stand at their post, if must be, unhelped, unappreciated, and unthanked. Without men and women of such caliber, the church could not survive. But what about those who are not so mature? In his youth, John Mark left Paul and Barnabas on their first journey. He went not with them to the work, Acts 15 and verse 38. Well, when it came time to go on their second missionary journey, Paul refused to take him on the next trip. But Barnabas stood by him. And years later, Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 11, Take Mark and bring him with you, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Friends, what if Barnabas had not encouraged Mark at the time of his immaturity? Well, there's a great possibility that he never would have grown into the strong and mature child of God that he became. The word encourage is not found in the King James Version of the New Testament, But the word exhort is found, and one of the definitions of exhort is to encourage. Exhortation is listed in Romans 12 and verse 8 as a spiritual gift, but it is also a service that makes life more pleasant for everyone. It is a service that could be rendered without inspiration, and it isn't called for just because someone would fold without it. Jesus wanted it for his disciples at Gethsemane, but did not receive it, and there appeared an angel from heaven and gave him that strength. Luke 22 and verse 43. Paul yearned for encouragement in his lonely prison cell, and whether he received it or not, we do not know. But we all need encouragement. We all have those times when we feel weak, when we're struggling, and we need someone to come along and exhort us, to build us up, to strengthen us. Now some of us seem to get more than our fair share of it, while others receive very little encouragement. Our teachers are usually told that it was a wonderful sermon, even if it wasn't. And probably they're grateful for that kind of support. I like to think that they would do their work faithfully without it, but who knows for sure. There are others who are serving, giving, and working faithfully in areas that are essential to the church's survival. The ladies who prepare meals, who visit, and who do other uh, tasks around the building, the brethren who take care of the building and the grounds, who visit, who pay the bills, who arrange worship, who lead prayers and singing, they're all doing a very needed work. But how much encouragement do they get? Do we dare gamble on their maturity? Well, even if we can, wouldn't it be nicer for all of us if we occasionally expressed our gratitude to them? And what about those who attend worship? Hebrews 10 verses 24 and 25 states, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but listen to this, but exhorting or encouraging one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. Yes, friends, let us exhort and encourage each other in attending worship and in living the Christian life. And may God bless all of those who encourage, like Barnabas, and may they be ever blessed by our Father in heaven. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today, and have a blessed day.